Hi, and welcome to this video on binary repository management. My name is Mandis Momberg, and I am a Principal Solutions Architect with AWS. And I am joined today with Jay Yeras, our subject matter expert on binary repository management. We'll talk about why you need to use something like a binary repository management for your dependencies during build time and inside of your automation and CI CD pipelines. So, Jay, can you tell us a little bit more about why a customer should care about using something like a binary repository manager instead of just building from the upstream sources that are available? That's a great question. When you consider the developer's experience and the process that they take to build their applications, from an organizational perspective, you want to mitigate any security concerns. Typically, when developers are building their application, they're going to pull dependencies from external resources. Oftentimes, you don't know where those resources are or who created them or anything like that. Solutions like JFrog's Artifactory provide you with centralized storage of your artifacts, but they also provide you with granular controls so that you can control that environment and give your developers a more secure place from which they can pull these resources they need to build their application. Right, so it kind of gives them that freedom to go and pull sources and pull libraries that they want to consume that speeds up their development, but they know they can do it in a trusted manner without concerns about security and those things. Absolutely, it gives them peace of mind and it also gives stakeholders in the organization peace of mind to know that their applications are going to be stable and secure with reliable resources. Yeah, so I know that there's a bunch of these repository managers available out there. Uh, what are we going to do today and what are we going to work on today? So today, we're going to um, spin up Artifactory in, as a container in ECS, and we're gonna show you how quickly and easily you can set this up and configure it um, to start caching some of those dependencies uh, for a sample application. Thanks, Jay. So we are running through the AWS Modernization Workshop, and you can find that online. It's free for everybody to use at https colon forward slash forward slash modernize.awsworkshop.io. And Jay has been so kind as to set up a module specifically focusing on binary repository management using Artifactory. And he's going to walk us through what you need to do in order to set up Artifactory and then later use that in your CI CD pipeline. Thanks, Mandis. Let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch a CloudFormation template that's going to provision um, a version of Artifactory, the open source version of Artifactory, into an ECS cluster. Right, and, and we do that in the CloudFormation templates available in the source for this workshop, right? Absolutely. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to monitor the environment from our AWS CLI to make sure that the CloudFormation template has successfully completed. So once our CloudFormation template has successfully provisioned our resources into our environment, we're going to run another command uh, that's going to query uh, the network interface for the container, and we're going to get the public IP address that we're later going to use to log into Artifactory. So to do that, um, I'm going to open up a new browser window, and I'm going to go to the IP address that I've just copied and port 8081. In just a few moments, Artifactory is going to load on my screen and I'm going to go through the initial steps to uh, configure my newly provisioned instance. So this is self-explanatory. We're simply going to proceed and click Next for most of these. So I have my welcome screen and I'll click Next through that. And then I am asked to provide an administrator password for my admin account. So I'll go ahead and provide one. and I'll click Next. Now, for this portion of the exercise, we're gonna go ahead and skip because the architecture that we're providing is a basic architecture to mainly show you the functionality of Artifactory. So we're not going to go with a complex reference architecture that's gonna consist of load balancers or high availability or things of that nature. So we'll go ahead and skip this section and now the next step we're going to do is select our repository. Now, Artifactory supports a multitude of different repositories and package management solutions. For our purposes, we're going to select Maven. So I select that and I click Create. 
and everything's complete, so I can proceed and click Finish. Now that we've successfully set up the admin user and we've created our initial repository, we're going to do a couple of other configuration changes. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our remote repositories. And the reason for that is that our application has some dependencies with prime faces. So we're going to set up a remote repository for our prime faces within Artifactory. And this is again a Maven repo, so we'll go ahead and click Maven. And for my repository key, I'm going to type prime faces. Now the URL is going to be different. It's not jcenter.bintray. Our URL is going to be repository dot prime faces dot org. Once I've typed that in, I'm going to click the test button. And that should return a message saying that it was able to successfully connect to the server. I can proceed now and click save and finish. Now we're not quite there yet. Artifactory provides virtual repositories that allow you to define multiple remote repositories and combine them into one. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our admin panel and we're going to click on virtual under repositories. Now what we're going to do here is add the remote repository that we just at, uh, created into our libs release virtual repository. So once we select that option we see prime faces listed as one of the available repositories. We'll go ahead and select that and we'll click the arrow to add that to our repositories. And I'll go ahead and save and finish that. Okay, so at this point you have set up Artifactory using AWS Fargate and you've added the repositories that we can pull the sources from. So we're in a good state to now integrate things like security on those libraries and check them in a secure and an environment that we control. Partially. Now, the next step that we need to do is we need to configure the environment that we're going to use for our CD, CICD pipeline to be able to pull those dependencies from our newly created Artifactory uh, instance. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to the AWS CLI on our Cloud9 instance. And we're going to do the same process that we did before where we obtain the public IP address of our container. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy that IP address and we're going to substitute it into our settings.xml file. So this is the settings.xml for Maven that we are using to build our application? That's correct. And what changes are we making in that settings.xml? We're adding the Artifactory IP address into the settings.xml file so that it can pull dependencies when we start that build process from Artifactory instead of external resources. Okay, so when our developers now build our application, it builds from our managed JFrog Artifactory solution instead of the upstream repositories. That's correct. So now that we've substituted the IP address in our settings.xml file to include our Artifactory IP address, we're going to go ahead and copy that settings.xml file to our other module, the containerized application module. And again, from my Cloud9 environment, I'm going to go ahead and CD into that containerized application module. So now when I invoke Docker Compose to do my build process again for our Pet Store app, Artifactory is going to be um, used to pull down those dependencies that are needed for that application. So as the build process uh, begins, expect that it may take up to 15 minutes for that to complete. Once complete, you can go back to Artifactory and you can view your libs release virtual repository. And when you expand that, you'll see that all of the dependencies that this application needs are going to be cached in Artifactory for later use.
So now that we have this environment going and we have all of our libraries inside of this repository, is there a way for us to attach this to our security implementation to make sure that we always know whether a library is secure or maybe a CVE gets cut against it? Do we get updates, those type of things? The short answer is yes, and we'll cover that in more detail in our security module. Our build is now complete. Now we have a packaged application that includes dependencies that were obtained from our Artifactory instance. Great, thanks, Jay. It seemed pretty simple to get this Artifactory deployed and it's deployed into Fargate. You mentioned that there are other ways to deploy this as well. Can you maybe just elaborate a little bit about what a highly available solution like this would look like? Absolutely. So Artifactory comes in different editions. One of those editions, uh, their Pro or their Enterprise editions, allow you to have object storage uh, using Amazon S3. Um, they also have RDS that can be used for your database, which lends to more complex architectures as well as allowing you to provide high availability of your Artifactory instance. So you can deploy those across multiple availability zones. But again, for our purposes, we're going to use the open source version, which will provide basic functionality for us to be able to build an application quickly and easily as a container. So thanks a lot, Jay, for taking the time out to come and talk to us about binary repository management. So in this module, we learned that you shouldn't be building your applications using unsecured third party repositories that are available to the public. Those sources can't be trusted. And to really give your developers the freedom to explore and iterate, you should give them a secure place to build from in order to keep your applications secure. In our next module, we'll talk about how to take this container image that we built from secure sources and store it in the Amazon Elastic Container Registry so that we can deploy that container at scale across multiple environments. So please follow the links in the description below to find the next module and learn more about how you can securely deploy your application containers.